eating the last of the asparagus today. I'm hobbling around a little bit. <laughs> Luckily I have a really great helper. Abby's been learning all the all the chores. She's doing a wonderful job. Is this enough for us? Uh, I think that's probably enough for the morning. Wow. These guys are like looking just really great. Yeah, they just want their food. They'll be six weeks old in uh, two days. So they are eight, eight weeks you can butcher them. So we're looking right around 4th of July. Abby can't quite move them yet, so I'm not I'm not totally useless. So that's good. You did a, you're doing a great job with chickens. You know that. <laughs> Abby takes care of her own chickens in there every morning now. They're getting a little bit rambunctious, going all over the yard. They're still quite small. You have to realize they're they're the same age as the uh, as the white broiler chickens, and so. They grow much slower, but these will be the egg layers hopefully for the next uh, three or four years. And of course, we still got the main uh, the main flock here. <laughs> got to keep them fed as well, huh? Although this time of year they prefer to spend about 16 hours a day outside. And in this garden, oh my goodness, it is just absolutely killing it. All right, the okra is coming along nicely on both sides there. Some other traditional things like peas are really going well. The beans are coming in nicely and the little little corn stalks are popping up. But this time of year has been all about salad. Oh my goodness, so much salad. You got spinach coming in here like crazy too. These are all potatoes. They're looking uh, looking pretty healthy. Zucchinis are coming in strong. We got these other garden beds we just planted last week. They're already coming in strong as well. Look at all those radishes. We only planted those radishes a week ago and they're already popping up. It's, uh, it's craziness. We got tatsoi here. We got Swiss chard. Bags filling up here. Snag a couple onions. I think we have a few onions to spare. Been trying to fertilize as well. We have comfrey tea. Lily's gonna fill my buckets. Thank you. Tell you about the comfrey tea another time. That's like one of the game changers. But can you guys imagine just having a garden like this in town, just full of vegetables that we could, you know, have community to come and pick? Uh, every, we could put the whole town in salad with just a garden this size and just some basic training to help people to understand how to pick these things, but it's really, it's so simple. We got more lettuce coming in here to replace uh, the old ones and Abby's, Abby's picking those right now. Good. We also have these, the radishes, if you let them go to seed, they make these little pods. And actually, they're like a, a mixture between a pea and a radish. One of my very favorite things, so I don't actually, I don't harvest all the radishes because I'd rather have these than a radish. Look at all the greens, holy moly, and the sourdough bread. Beautiful. What are you doing there, little bread thief? Yeah. <laughs> Look at this life. Oh my goodness. It's amazing. Got a little bit shorter video today. I just wanted to kind of uh, address a question. It's come up a couple different times now. So we're in full swing for Summer of Serve, which is one of the major pieces of the puzzle of how we're trying to eliminate blight in Catanning and achieve our goals for Catanning 300. If you don't know what those things are, uh, you know, there's, you can check out, I'll, I'll link a couple videos here from the past to kind of uh, catch you up on all of that. So last year was actually the first year that we wanted to document our progress as far as um, eliminating blight throughout the city. And it was really successful in the first year. We documented a ch an improvement of 13.41% in the residential uh, areas of Catanning. 
Obviously I've been making videos for the past several years and uh, documenting all of the changes in town, documenting all the Summer of Serve projects, and, and uh, hundreds of you have commented on those videos over time. A lot of those are not public comments, but just messages that are sent to me thanking the groups of volunteers that have done just incredible work over the past several years. So I feel like it's really starting to get noticed. I feel like the change is really beginning to accelerate, and uh, that leads to some questions. Some people ask if they can get involved, and the answer is absolutely yes. Some people ask how can they support us, and I'll have to answer those questions specifically. But a lot of people are wondering, you know, can they get some help with their house, and will they be eligible uh, to participate in Summer of Serve in that way? The short answer is yes, but I wanted to explain a little bit more about how we come up with the projects and how we select uh, the projects that we're going to complete next. So part of the vision to transform the city has to do with selecting certain areas. Last year we focused on Wilson Avenue. Uh, we focused on that whole area because that's where Habitat for Humanity was focusing. And we wanted to make as much impact in one year as possible. Uh, this year we're focusing on the trail corridor. And so right here on the Armstrong Trail, there are a lot of houses all along here that need that are in need of a lot of help and uh, some that just need some little things. And so we're trying to just make as much impact on the trail corridor as we possibly can. Now that does not mean you have to live on the trail corridor here in order to get help from Summer of Serve. Uh, in fact, if you've been following this channel for any period of time, you know last year you know, we did projects all over town. Just because we're focusing on one area doesn't mean that's the only area we're gonna stay because the second rule is that we wanna make as much impact as possible. For example, last year, this was a simple porch painting job. We did this porch in just a couple hours. Um, the paint was really peeling off of it, and now it's still holding up really well a year later. But that was a project that was a very simple project that made a big difference on the house. And so if we can find something like that that's going to make a big impact in the community, then we're definitely going to try to uh, complete that project. So we measure the impact using our system that we developed last year and uh, so Kevin and I, we've actually ranked every single house in the borough and so uh, we know how much impact a project is going to have based off of our system and so we kind of work our way down the list and we try to search for projects that will have the greatest impact. But uh, there's a third category as well that we take a look at uh, for every single project on whether or not we want to complete it. The last thing we look at is need. Obviously we want to help people that need help and so uh, that can go in a lot of different ways and some people have more need than others but we want to help people with a genuine need. Now that can be a physical need like they're not physically able to do it or a financial need. They can, uh, they, they can do part of the project but they can't afford the whole thing and so if we can provide free labor certainly willing to do that. Or it can be just a need like, I'm living next to this house and the grass is up to my shoulders, can someone come and help me with this? And so a lot of things factor into the decision of what projects we actually choose. But what I would tell you is, please, please, please continue to get a hold of me. Uh, we've gotten so many connections with other people, not only uh, people coming and connecting with us and serving, uh, but also connecting with new projects. And so that can open up a relationship and then maybe it leads to another relationship down the street and it leads to another thing and another thing. They're all important. So uh, you're not bothering me. If you have a need or you, or you know somebody in need, please continue to contact me. I've had a half a dozen people or so uh, contact me with possible projects for us to do. And some of those things will happen this year and some of them will just go on my list for next year and future years. And so um, it all makes a difference. Keep doing it.